Today we're taking you to Egmont Key on a tour with Hubbard's Marina. Egmont Key is a Florida State Park, a natural preserve, and has only one full-time resident. Now we've got a ferry to catch, so we'll see you on the island. Welcome back to Exploration. We're Jamie and Skylar, and today we're taking you to yet another Florida island paradise. But today's destination is a bit different than your typical Florida beach spot. So stick around to see what it has to offer and how you can see it for yourself. So the weather forecast today only gave about a 10% chance of rain, but these clouds ahead of us are saying otherwise. So hopefully we'll stay dry today. While our morning drive was rain free, we did see an amazing rainbow along our route to the Fort DeSoto Park Ferry Terminal. Once at the ferry terminal, we made our way to the Egmont Key Ferry Kiosk, where we found two tickets waiting for us, along with another great view of this early morning rainbow. Now we almost didn't bring our rain jackets today, but as you can see, it's already kind of raining on us, so I'm glad that we packed them. Thankfully, the rain showers had already ended by the time we boarded the Hubbard's Marina Ferry. And in just a few short minutes, we were on our way to Egmont Key. On the ferry, we found a variety of snacks for sale, a restroom, plus fantastic views of the Gulf of Mexico, Tampa Bay, and several different islands. We found the 50-minute ferry ride to be relaxing and informative as the guides shared an abundance of information on Egmont Key and its surrounding waters. And before we knew it, we had arrived. All right, folks, to Egmont Key. Ready to go explore? Let's do it. Yeah. So the ferry just dropped us off in this area by the Coast Guard dock close to the lighthouse. And pretty much everybody on the ferry headed this way towards where the forts are and the best beaches. So we're gonna start off heading to some of the trails over here and try to end our day in this area. But if you're like us, you'll wanna grab some coffee before your day on the island and we'll show you where to get it right now. Located seven miles straight north of Fort DeSoto, you'll find Addicted to the Bean, which offers ice cream and pastries, merchandise, sandwiches, and of course, coffee. And while we learn that this shop has recently changed ownership, we can confirm that their coffee is better than ever. Back on the island, we were fully caffeinated and ready to explore. So I know this isn't like the prettiest beach that we brought you to here on our channel. This is really peaceful. If you're enjoying this video so far and want to see more Florida Island adventures, be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications on. So everyone else went that way to the lighthouse and we're going this way. So we just reached the guardhouse and we've been on the island for about 10 minutes now. Our first impressions are that this island is quiet, it's beautiful, but the bugs are going to be a problem and we forgot to pack our bug spray. We're also really regretting that we didn't buy the bug spray that they were selling on the ferry. Eager to learn about Egmont Key and to get a break from the bugs, we made our way into the guardhouse. I hope you see one of these today. After learning about some of Egmont Key's animal residents, we found this cool interactive map of the island. So we were dropped off at the ferry landing, which is close to the lighthouse, and then we made our way down to the guard house, and there are a ton of trails on this island. All the areas that are blinking are trails, and I believe the ferry said that we could hike out here for like three hours if we wanted to. After checking out a few more of the guardhouse's educational exhibits, we made our way outside for our first animal sighting. The staff was kind enough to tell us that there was a gopher tortoise right outside of the guardhouse today, hanging out in his hole. Now, if you're lucky enough to visit Egmont Key when the guardhouse is open, it's definitely worth your time. There's a ton of information on display, and if you talk to the staff there, they will share a lot about the history of the island. And we have to take the time to thank Barbara, who we met outside of the guardhouse and was kind enough to share some of her bug spray with us. 
Now that we checked out the guardhouse, we're gonna try to find this ghost town. It didn't take long before we spotted another of the island's inhabitants, this beautiful, giant, swallowtail butterfly. We found ourselves to be surprised by the good condition of the island's trails, as well as the lack of people on them on this Saturday in August. So we did find a black racer, but it's hanging out off the trail. With our first tortoise and snake sightings out of the way, we continued to make our way towards the ghost town. I think this has to be like the old town area. Let's go check it out. So it cost $2,400 to build a fire station back in 1910 on an island. So we have seen two snakes so far, and both times I saw them and Skylar like had no idea they were there. <laughs> I knew they so, were there when I hear you scream. <laughs> hey, I only screamed on the second one. So this is the spot where I would have been spending most of my time if I lived on this island because it's where the bakery used to be. In addition to a bakery, we learned that this once bustling military outpost was home to a school, a hospital, and even a bowling alley. And while only the ruins of these facilities remain today, the natural beauty of this island is abundant. So we are out here on a Saturday, which is gonna be one of the busier times to be on this island. And while I'm sure the beaches are busy right now, there is not a single other person in this ghost town and I am loving it. Now that we found the ghost town, it's time to hit the beach. Something else you'll have to watch out for here are spider webs. We've already almost run into a few of them. Thankfully, these guys are pretty much harmless. I'm anxious to see this beach. We've never been to this beach before. And for the nicest beach on Egmont Key, you'll want to make your way to the west edge of the island. Now we do have to thank the Hubbard's Marina Ferry staff for the complimentary tickets today to allow us to share this experience with you on our channel. So if you're interested in visiting Egmont, be sure to check out their website to book some tickets. So we made it out to the beach and one thing that surprised us was this beautiful path that runs along it. So if you're into beach hikes, you won't find much of a better spot than this. Visitors who make their way to the western shoreline of Egmont Key will find the ruins of the island's former power plant and over a mile of white sandy beach. But as much of this island is a shorebird refuge, portions of the island's beaches are restricted. So as expected, the vast majority of people out on this island are here on the beach, and rightfully so because it is beautiful. And while there were many more people on this beach than in the interior of the island, we were still amazed with how uncrowded this beach was for a Saturday in the summer. Visitors will find some areas of this beach to be full of shells, while other sections offer soft sand perfect for barefoot beach walks. So last weekend we were out filming and saw over a hundred dogs, but this weekend it's totally different because there are no pets allowed on this island. And with no pets and very few people on this island, it was hard to imagine much more of a quiet and peaceful place to be. But unfortunately, our time on Egmont Key was limited, which meant it was time to leave this beautiful beach. We made our way back towards the inland trails in search of the three battery ruins located on the northwest portion of the island. And while we may have gotten slightly lost, we found something unique and interesting around every turn. We eventually found our way back onto a paved trail, which led us to the first of the three batteries, Battery Macintosh. We learned that this battery housed two 8-inch caliber guns, was constructed in 1900, and deactivated in 1923. The remaining batteries would lead us further to the north, the next of which was Battery Guy Howard. Well, we're gonna have to walk inside this one. 
we learn that this battery housed two six-inch caliber guns, was constructed in 1904, and deactivated in 1917. So if it seems like our footage of these forts is a little rushed, it's because it is. We did not leave ourselves nearly enough time to adequately explore all of them. This is our third and final battery of the day, Battery Charles Mellon. Now this fort is really cool. Let's go show you what it looks like at the top. If you're still enjoying this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment. So we definitely saved the best battery for last. Look at that view. Oh man, this is so pretty, but we gotta get going. Would you spend your time on Egmont Key exploring, relaxing on the beach, or both? Let us know in the comments. I am loving this shade, it's getting hot. So we just got done checking out the third and final battery and we have 20 minutes before we gotta get back on the ferry. We couldn't resist making one last walk out to the beach before making our way to our last stop of the day, the lighthouse. We learned that this 87 foot tall lighthouse has been in operation since 1848, is the oldest structure in the Tampa Bay area, and is still used for its original purpose. So there is one person that lives here full time and that is the park manager. And he lives in that house right there, right next to the lighthouse. So we just finished up at the last stop of the day, which is the lighthouse. Now Jamie's already waiting back at the beach for the ferry because she's worried about missing it, and I better hurry up so that I don't. I really can't believe how fast the time flew by here. We're going to have to come back here one day just to spend time on the beach because there was so much to explore. And our Hubbard's Marina Ferry is already here. It looks like it's almost full, so we better get going. Happy to have made it back to the Hubbard's Ferry, we were excited for our ride back to Fort DeSoto. And while we make our way back to the dock, we're going to share some more of the information that we learned while on Egmont Key. The island is perhaps most well known for being the location of Fort Dade, constructed in 1898 to defend Tampa Bay during the Spanish-American War. While the fort never saw battle, it was home to around 300 military residents in the early 1900s, and many ruins of the fort still remain. Today, the island is a state park, a national wildlife refuge, and a bird sanctuary. Dating back to 1886, the island was also used as a base of operations for the Tampa Bay Pilots Association. This group is responsible for the navigation of commercial vessels entering and leaving the Port of Tampa under the beautiful Sunshine Skyway Bridge. If you had a good time today, guys, leave us a review. Google, Yelp, TripAdvisor, Facebook, Smoke Signals, or Skywriting. And thanks a lot, guys. Thank you so much for coming out. Hope you see you again. We just got back from Egmont Key and the tour with Hubbard's is about five hours with a little over three hours being on the island. And to be honest, that time just flew by. Yeah, it did. And if you follow our channel, you may remember our video from last winter when we went on another tour with Hubbard's out of the same terminal. Now that tour went to Shell Key and only spent two hours on the island. And honestly, that was enough because there isn't much to do on Shell Key other than hang out on the beach. Yeah, we really expected today's experience to be very similar, but when we got got to Egmont, we saw there was quite a bit to see. And to be honest, we could have spent a few more hours there. Yeah, and we were so busy trying to fit everything in that we totally forgot to eat any of our snacks. So we are super hungry and ready to go find a late lunch spot. That lunch spot took us just a few miles to the north to Tierra Verde, where you'll find Tony and Nello's Grill serving up Southern Italian cuisine. Our first visit to Tony and Nello's got off to a great start with an ice cold Arnold Palmer for me and a tall Peroni for Skylar. Next came the fresh bread and salad, which I topped with some delicious blue cheese dressing. Skylar's dish came out first and we both laughed when it came out because it is so huge. 
I'm hungry, but I am not that hungry. <laughs> that looks amazing. And to our amazement, my pasta dish was just as big as Skylar's stromboli. That's huge. While we sure were impressed with the size of our dishes, we were interested to see how they tasted. Wow, that's really good. And I have to say, both Skylar's Mediterranean stromboli and my pasta rustica were fantastic. That sauce is delicious. Rosemary, right? Rosemary cream sauce? Rosemary cream sauce. So normally when you find ridiculously huge portions like this, the quality isn't that great, but both of these dishes are excellent. Despite our best efforts, we came nowhere close to finishing this massive meal, but we sure did enjoy trying. And we both agreed this was the perfect spot to end a day on Egmont Key. Egmont Key is just one of two islands you can visit from Fort DeSoto with Hubbard's Marina. And you can check out the other one by clicking here right now. Thanks for watching.